Hi everyone, this is Rohan and in this video, I am going to discuss about certain terms that we get to hear during the selling and buying of real estate properties like built up area, carpet area, FSI, super built up area and loading factor. So let's get started by understanding what is built up area. A built up area of a floor is the covered area measured at the floor level of any story. Now this definition is given by National Building Code of India 2016 Volume 1 Part 3 and you'll find it on page 13. For me it is very important to give you the references of these terms so that you know the authenticity of these definitions. Now let us try to understand this definition a little bit in the detail. So a built up area is usually calculated for one entire floor at a time. So for that, I would first like to show you one typical four floor plan. Now here in this floor plan, you can see that it is of a residential building. In one floor, there are four 2 BHK flats. This is one 2 BHK flat. This is the second 2 BHK flat. This is the third and this is the fourth 2 BHK flat. Here you see the common area, there is a staircase and there is also a lift here. And on the two sides of the lift, there are two ducts. Usually one of the ducts may be for firefighting and the other duct may be for electrical appliances, for cables of direct to home satellite TVs, etc. And lastly, here you see there is an area adjoining to the toilet called as OTS. OTS stands for open to sky. Now through this spaces usually the uh, plumbing work of the toilet as well as maybe the rainwater pipes from the roof all of this passes through this OTS open to space duct. Now I will repeat the uh, definition. So let us consider that this is the floor for which we are going to try to find out the built up area. So what are the things that needs to be included in built up area and what are the things that needs to be excluded. So for that let us go through the definition once more. Built up area of a floor is the covered area. It has to be the covered area measured at the floor level. So here I am going to show in the next slide in green which are the areas to be covered for calculating built up area. So let's see. So as you can see here, I covered the entire plan with green. Even these two ducts as well as this open to space area. Okay. Now you may ask that for built up area, it has to be a covered area then this open to sky is not covered. How is that we are taking into account that also while calculating built up area? So for that my answer is usually the general uh, laws say that if there is a duct which is lesser than 2 meters square in area then that has to be included in the built up area. And as you can see this open to space area as well as this two ducts, these are much much lesser than 2 meter squares. So this whole thing has been taken under built up area. Everything starting from the exterior world, interior world, toilet, bedroom, kitchen, anything you say, it all has been covered under built up area. But please understand that this is the built up area of one particular floor, that is this floor. Now why do we need the built up area? Well, we need the built up area to find out the floor space index. So floor space index FSI or the floor area ratio is the quotient obtained by dividing the total covered area, well that is nothing but the built up area, on all floors by the area of the plot. Again, I'll give you the reference. The reference is again NBC of India 2016 part 1, sorry, volume 1 part 3, page 11. Now, here I would like to explain FSI with an example. For example, if you have a plot of size 35 meter by 20 meter and on that plot, you're constructing a G plus 4 building where the built up area of the ground floor is 180 meter. 
बिल्ट अप एरिया ऑफ द फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड फ्लोर आर टू ट्वेंटी मीटर स्क्वायर बिल्ट अप एरिया ऑन द सेकेंड एंड फोर्थ फ्लोर आर टू हंड्रेड मीटर स्क्वायर देन फर्स्ट वॉट वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू एड अप ऑल द बिल्ट अप एरियाज ऑफ ऑल द फ्लोर सो वन एट्टी मीटर ऑफ ग्राउंड फ्लोर टू ट्वेंटी ऑफ फर्स्ट फ्लोर टू हंड्रेड ऑफ सेकेंड फ्लोर टू ट्वेंटी ऑफ थर्ड फ्लोर टू हंड्रेड ऑफ फोर्थ फ्लोर इफ आई एड ऑल ऑफ दिस आई गेट वन जीरो टू जीरो मीटर स्क्वायर एंड सेकेंडली द एरिया ऑफ द प्लॉट विल बी नथिंग बट थर्टी फाइव मीटर इन टू ट्वेंटी मीटर्स दैट इज सेवन हंड्रेड मीटर्स सो इफ दिस इज द केस देन एफ एस आई इज द टोटल बिल्ट अप एरिया ऑफ ऑल द फ्लोर डिवाइडेड बाई द एरिया ऑफ द प्लॉट दैट इज इन दिस केस इज वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव सेवन सो द एफ एस आई दैट वी फाउंड आउट इज वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव सेवन नाउ वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस एफ एस आई एफ एस आई इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर अ बिल्डर और अ कंस्ट्रक्टर टू कैलकुलेट बिकॉज ईच एरिया हैज अ लिमिट टू द एफ एस आई Uh, which has been specified by the local uh, municipal corporation so for example if this is in a place where the maximum fsi is 1.5 then this building is okay but if there is a place where the maximum fsi allowed is 1.4 then this building may not be allowed to construct so it is very important to know that what is the fsi of a building so so far we have covered built up area and floor space index so let's now move on to another important concept that is the carpet area carpet area is the net usable floor area of an apartment again i'll give you the reference it is nothing but the nbc of india 2016 volume 1 part 3 page 11 however if you are a common consumer net usable floor area of an apartment doesn't necessarily make clear sense to you so for that i'm going to use another reference which is the real estate regulatory regulatory and development bill of 2016 chapter 2 page 223 as commonly known in these days as rera so in rera uh, the definition has been very well clarified for uh, carpet area where it clearly shows which are the areas to be included and which are the areas to be excluded in order to calculate the carpet area now before seeing that let us first understand that the carpet area is going to be calculated for one apartment for one flat not the entire floor so carpet area is always for one apartment so keeping that in mind let us first see what are the areas to be excluded so carpet area excludes areas covered by the external walls number 2 areas under services shafts areas under uh, areas of balcony or veranda and areas of open terrace so these four areas from one apartment building has to be excluded to get the carpet area then let us also see what are the things to be included so carpet area includes the area covered by the internal partition walls of the apartment so the area under the internal walls has to be taken into consideration and secondly the area of all the rooms that is the hall bedroom kitchen toilet bathroom dining room whatever it is it has to be taken into consider under carpet area i would like to further explain this with the help of an example uh, so let's see a plan a typical plan of a 2 bhk flat okay so here you see this is the entrance of the 2 bhk flat this is the living room adjacent to that here there is the kitchen on the other side here there is a balcony right if you go further down this passage here there is a bedroom further down the passage this is the master bedroom attached with the master bedroom is one toilet and this here is the common toilet and here this is the service duct through which the plumbing most probably of the toilet must be passing so this comprises of a this is a very typical plan of a 2 bhk flat okay so now 
what is the carpet area of this flat so what are the areas to be included let's 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 first just recall what are the things to be excluded the exterior walls need to be excluded number 1 the balcony needs to be excluded number 2 we don't have a open uh, open to space area so there is no question of that being excluded number 4 uh, the services shaft needs to be excluded so keeping into that again i am going to color green the parts which are to be included for carpet area so here you see only the area of the rooms and the area of the internal walls right are coming under carpet area the area of the external walls are excluded the balcony is excluded the area of the shaft is excluded so this much only is the carpet area now what is the use of carpet area see for a buyer this is of utmost important because this is what actually they are getting as a product for living right so this is the net usable area which they are buying and rera has made it compulsory for all builders to disclose what is the carpet area of a flat that a person is buying so so far we have covered built up area floor space index fsi and carpet area and i have given you proper references which i encourage you to go and check so that you get further clarity on it now moving on i would like to introduce another term which we get to hear that is the super built up area and it is sometimes called as the saleable area and before i define these terms i would like to first and foremost tell you that to the best of my knowledge there is no reference available for this now of course if you search online you will find uh, certain people telling you that this is super built up area that is super built up area even some of the websites which are dedicated for housing uh, they will tell you this is built up area that is built up area however no proper document from either the central government or the uh, lok uh, the state government or the local municipal uh, corporations are there which define the term super built up area properly and sadly this area is the basis on which the buyers are uh, 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 actually charged so i am going to try to explain super built up area to you based on my experience of the market but of course my explanation may differ a little here and there with other people's explanation because as i told you there is no proper reference from statutory bodies that is available for the term super built up area or saleable area with keeping that in mind let us see what is meant by super built up area so super built up area is basically carpet area of the apartment okay plus the area covered by the external walls remember how in carpet area we had deducted area covered by the external walls now we are adding it back plus area of balconies or veranda or open terrace if any that means if these are there again please recall that in carpet area we had deducted this place also so in super built up area it is again added back plus equivalent area of common areas like staircase elevators passages etc i'll explain to you the term equivalent area little later and lastly equivalent area of amenities like swimming pool gym etc if there are there so let's just go over this one more time super built up area of an apartment is carpet area of the apartment plus area covered by the external walls plus area of balconies or veranda or open terrace if any plus equivalent area of all common areas like staircase elevators passages etc plus equivalent area of amenities like swimming pool gym etc if there are any now again of course since this is a term which is not available with us equivalent area is also something that i need to explain to you so equivalent area is 
the total area divided by the total number of apartments. Let me break it down to you. Now see, the staircase, elevator, passages, these are some common areas which are used by everybody in the whole apartment, isn't it? in the whole building. Similarly, if there is a swimming pool or a gym, again, it is going to be used by everybody in the uh, uh, building. So, how does the builder take the cost of this from one person? It adds up the areas of all of this and divides it equally amongst all the buildings. For example, if the common areas are say, uh, let's say uh, 150 meters square and uh, there are uh, say 15 flats, right? 150 meters square and 15 flats. So each flat will have to get 150 divided by 15, that is 10 meters square. That will be the equivalent area that is to be added, you know, to get the super built up area. Now, it is also my duty to make you aware that equivalent area is sometimes also referred to as proportional area when it comes to flats having different sizes. For example, in a building, there may be a possibility that there is a 3 BHK flat of 1200 square feet and there is a 2 BHK flat of say 950 square feet. Now, the thing is, should the 950 uh, uh, square feet uh, person pay the same amount of money for the equivalent area of common spaces than the, uh, the 3 BHK flat owner? Uh, well, some may argue not. So therefore, there is this concept of proportional area. However, I don't buy into this idea personally because uh, it doesn't matter on the uh, size of the flat that you're buying. Everybody uses the common spaces and the amenities equally. So therefore, I like to uh, put forward the idea of equivalent area. And anyway, since there are no proper uh, references available, this point is still open for debate. Now, as you can see, already this thing has got a little complicated for the general buyer to understand all of these things. So generally, to simplify all of these things, there is a term that is used called as the loading factor or sometimes uh, uh, in, in, in local language, it is just called as loading. Okay, and of course, I don't need to tell you that there is again no proper reference available for this. So what is a loading factor? Loading factor is basically super built up area divided by carpet area super built up area divided by carpet area. So for example, if for an apartment, the carpet area is 56 meters square and super built up area, that is carpet area plus all the things that I showed you in the previous slide. If you add up those, if it goes up to 73 meters square, then the loading factor will be 73 divided by 56, that is 1.3. So the loading factor is 1.3. Well, uh, sometimes this is also told in percentage. So 1.3 becomes 30%. So 30% loading. That means car on the carpet area, you are uh, adding 30% more area to get the sellable area. That is the basic concept. So whatever your carpet area, 30% more is added to that area to get the super built up area. Now, generally, uh, loading factors typically range from anywhere between 1.2 to 1.4. Now, if there is a building where there are no amenities, amenities basically means gym, uh, your uh, the swimming pool, uh, the community hall. If all of these things are not present, then of course, then the area of that is directly deducted. So the uh, loading factor is less 1.2 or you can say 20%. And if there is a building where there are various amenities, Okay, maybe a luxurious project or something like that. There it may go as high as 1.4. That means you're paying 40% more than uh, your uh, whatever you have for carpet area. Generally, uh, I would say 30% is a fair number. Okay, and as I told you earlier, the loading is sometimes also expressed in percentages like 20%, 30%, and 40%, etc. All right then, so that's for it for today. So please note down these references. So uh, I hope you understood the concepts of all these terms. And if you have any doubt, you can write in the comments below. Thank you for your time.